Yeah, you want to do this? Let's do it. I'm, I'm in. Okay, now wait, are we just doing this for fun or are we gonna make it so you're nervous? Put a little something on the line. You, you name it. The loser makes a donation to the winner's charity of choice. Done, all right. Okay. Ooh, that's right there. That's, that's <laughs> it! One of the things that I think is awesome about Spokane is we have unbelievably good public golf course. Ooh, good shot. Mm. Just the quality of life of being able to play golf or ski in the winter, or, you know, just participate in events like Hoop Fest and, and Bloomsday and, you know, all the, the wonderful things that, that we do. Get a chance to participate in Spokane. Well, well thank you for joining us today. Um, I, you don't need much of an introduction. You've been an absolute legend around here. So retired from KXLY after mm -hmm. 30 years. 37, but who's counting? <laughs> Well, that's more than 30. Wow, that's impressive. And then now you're play-by-play -play with Whitworth, doing some pro shop stuff at Canyon. And yeah, I like golf, so something to keep me busy is working at Indian Canyon and get to uh, see a lot of people. And usually when people come in to play golf, they're happy. Yeah. So it's fun to see them in that environment. It's fun to get a chance to go play some golf once in a while, too. Not always when they're done. Or is that just me? <laughs> good point. I'm always good excited point. to get there. I usually see them beforehand, so that's always good. Perfect. And, and a, a COVID survivor, so you've... Yeah experience that. Tell me about that experience. I don't know for sure where I picked it up, but I'm guessing it was Whitworth had a very successful basketball season again. And we went to Dallas and they won two games in the, the NCAA tournament and made the Sweet 16 in the Division Three tournament. And we're playing as well as anybody in the nation and had a chance to win the whole thing. And then on uh, Friday, I was supposed to be flying to Newark, New Jersey, and then we were driving to Philadelphia for a, a Sweet 16 game. On one of my flights, and I don't remember which one, there was a guy sitting next to me who was doing a lot of sneezing and coughing. I'm assuming that that's where I picked it up. Um, I, I didn't feel bad. A week later, we were doing some work. Uh, I did about six hours of yard work, and, and all of a sudden I was, was trying to tighten some nuts and bolts, and I couldn't hold the wrenches in place. And I thought I just maybe got dehydrated because I've been kind of working all day and went in and drank a bunch of water and sat down for a couple minutes, went back out and was fine and worked for another three hours or so. Next couple of days, I, I felt almost normal, just had a little bit of a body ache. Sometimes when you get the flu afterwards, you can feel that way. Didn't really think much of it at the time. And then just to be on the safe side, I kind of I quarantined myself in my basement away from my wife and daughter. And I just progressively started not feeling great that week, didn't want to eat, um, never had a fever. Uh, the biggest thing I had kind of starting on that Wednesday was, was chills. I would start shivering and then my body would just shake uncontrollably. And I, I wrapped myself in a blanket and turned a little space heater on. It took about 20 minutes for that to go away. And I, I broke out into a cold sweat. And so I had a repetition of that for a while and started emailing my doc. And he said, hey, because of, of your age and I'd been through cancer about 10 years ago, he goes, I think you should go get tested. And he also prescribed a Z-Pack, which is basically an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Dr. Dean suggested that, I did that. Uh, went down, got tested, came back home, told my wife and daughter, I said, you know, 93% of these tests come back negative, so everything's gonna be fine. And I uh, was back in the basement, and then on Sunday morning, three days after I took the test, I got a call from the health department saying that I had tested positive. Wow. And so uh, a little, I was surprised by that, number one. But I was starting to feel better, too, because the Z-Pack was kicking in. The email from the health department said, once you're not taking any Tylenol for fever, not taking any medications, and you're three days clear of your symptoms, you're fine to kind of go back into your household. So we waited five days just to be on the safe side. And then from the end of that three days, my wife and daughter had 14 days, they couldn't go out anywhere. Right. So I said, well, I'll do that with you. So we quarantined another 14 days. Fortunately, my wife had gone grocery shopping um, on Saturday, so we were fairly well stocked. And then as we ran out of a couple of essential items, the neighbors would go to the store for us and put it up on the porch. So. That worked out, and uh, eventually um, I got back. My stamina wasn't great. Um, it took a little while to build that back up. Um, and I never, I, I finally had the shortness of breath as I was getting better. Fortunately for me, that's as far as it progressed. Um, I didn't have to deal with going to the hospital or, or deal with any of the other things that, that so many people unfortunately have. So you sing one, what, do you know what your charity's gonna be? You know what, I'm gonna go Vanessa Behan though because we had to cancel the Rose Hours Open for the first time ever. Okay. This would have been year 33. So the nursery does great things and they're gonna miss out on a chunk of change because there's no Rose Hours Open this year. So I'm gonna go for, for the nursery, how about you? Uh, I was gonna go Union Gospel. Perfect. 
Maybe. Yep. Oh, got one. Well done. Way to go. Way to take the championship. All right. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll send Vanessa Behan a donation. I'll send one to UGM too, just to make it even. Perfect. There we go. Let's do it. All right. So what was your experience like at the fairgrounds? I drove up and when I was there, there weren't very many people in line. They had a couple of different spots. The first spot you come to is basically they're just checking to see that, that you're in the right spot. In the line I was in, they were doing two stations, but they only they didn't have a ton of cars there. So the first car left. They took me to the second one. Well, it hadn't been used in a while, so they put the, the pulse oxygen meter on my finger, but it had been sitting there and it was so cold that it didn't work. So he goes, well, let me go get another one. So he went and got another one, and they, they did that to check a couple of things, and then he checked my temperature, and then he put the, uh, there's a long, it's not, you know, not a Q-tip, it's longer than a Q-tip, and he goes, you're not gonna like me for about five seconds. And he puts this thing up my nose and it was like, ooh. And it kind of felt like when, when you're at the dentist and you have to get some Novocaine or if you're getting a shot at the doctor and they say, hey, you're gonna feel a little pinch. And he hit about three different spots. And I, so I had that sensation about three times. And then he says, okay, that's it, and pulled it out. I, I was fine afterwards. It was a little, you know, it was uncomfortable for that five seconds, but you can endure pretty much anything, I would think, for five seconds. So then he, he basically packaged it all up and, and put it in a refrigerator before they sent it off, and he said, you'll get results within three to seven days. And I was surprised, because it seemed like the, the testing had taken longer to get results, but the test was on a Thursday afternoon, and I got a phone call on a Sunday morning. You know, I was real surprised when they called and said, hey, you're positive. And when I started to see the reports about the possibility of once you've recovered, donating plasma to help people out, I thought it's a no brainer to go do it. And it turns out they, I guess, got five different bags, so five units of plasma. And I wasn't sure how long it lasted. And I asked them and they said, well, it lasts up to a year. So it's pretty cool that, so there's five units that can be used and apparently they can transport them anywhere in the country. And they'll be used but, as antibodies, yeah, research. My understanding on it is what they do is if, Folks are dealing with this, they're in the hospital and they're not reacting to say the z -pack. They don't get better like I did or, or some of the other things they do in the hospital. Maybe they're on a ventilator or, or with oxygen. They, they, as not a last resort, but pretty close to it, they inject this plasma from someone who's recovered into the body. And then those antibodies mix with their blood and that starts to help to make their situation better. Well, Bud, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's truly an honor to have you here. and. Really, we're glad you recovered and you're about to hit the golf course today. Yeah, so. and I just, you know, one thing I'll say is if there's someone who's in the situation I was in who did test positive for COVID and you've recovered, I'm very happy for that. We're blessed that way, but if you're able to, and there's some people who can't donate blood because of, of their health background, but if you can do it, it takes about an hour of your time and you might be able to help somebody out. So I, I encourage you to, to do what it takes to get that done and, and it'll help somebody in the long run. Absolutely, maybe save a life. Yep. Thank you guys. Uh, next week, we'll see you. We have Phil Altmeyer from the Union Gospel Mission and we'll be at Blaze Pizza with some other great guests. We'll see you then. Check out Community Positive, a TV show dedicated to promoting positivity. Each week, we highlight business owners and community leaders doing incredible things in the Spokane community. Saturday and Sunday at 6 on Fox 28.